Thank you, Mr Speaker. My grievance this morning is for the Minister for Health, and I thank the Minister for taking this grievance. This week is Women's Health Week, and today is International Gynaecological Awareness Day. Gynaecological health can have an enormous emotional impact, emotional and financial impact on women and their families. It can seriously impact on the quality of life for women. Yet women often suffer in silence, are not taken seriously by medical professionals, often going years without a diagnosis and appropriate treatment. The pelvic mesh disgrace is a clear example of women not being taken seriously and listened to when they raise issues with doctors about their own gynaecological health. Women are often told, you'll be fine, or it's just in your head, or it's, it's anxiety. Many women literally fight for years to have their pain recognised. Research cited in the Journal of Law, Medicine and Ethics in 2001 indicates that women get prescribed less pain medication than men after identical procedures and are less likely to be admitted to hospital and receive tests when they complain of pain and are significantly more likely than men to be undertreated for pain by doctors. Women's pain is often abdominal and gynaecological. Millions of women are suffering with conditions such as endometriosis, polycystic ovarian syndrome, premenstrual dysphoric disorder, incontinence, gynaecological cancers, sexually transmitted infections. Reproductive health is well accepted in the community. However, conditions that impact on a woman's, a woman's ability to conceive are not widely accepted. Many gynaecological conditions have huge lifetime consequences and complications, and some of these impact on a woman's ability to conceive, should they wish to, and can impact on intimate relationships. For some women, they, become victims of, they can be victims of their relationships, unwittingly infected with tra sexually transmitted infections, or have the violation of rape or cultural rituals that can result in devastating and permanent consequences. Social stigma is still attached to many of these conditions, and different generations of women deal with them differently. We, as a government, need to help destigmatise and promote discussion about gynaecological health, just as we do with mental health. More education, awareness and support is required in this field. On this day, International Gynaecological Awareness Day, I want to acknowledge a woman who is a warrior in this field. Kath Mazella, OAM, a Morley resident, here today with her husband Tony and her granddaughter Rebecca. She's a gyne gynaecological cancer survivor who's received over 10 awards for her advocacy work, including Senior of the Year 2018, and has self-funded her work for the past 24 years. Much of this work involves raising awareness young among women of gynaecological issues, and she's authored a book, Not So Secret Women's Business, attends groups, works with King Edward Memorial Hospital to promote International Gynaecological Awareness Day. Her desire is to bring the stories of women so that we know who, so that we know who we're helping and what would really benefit them. The first step is for them to be heard. Ms Mazella would like the government to share these stories with the broader community to increase awareness and provide the same support that is offered to other groups such as prostate and breast cancer. Millions of Australian women have had and will have gynaecological health issues. The stigma and taboos are still rife in the community and the suffering and silence has to stop. In closing, this year Lynette Ellard, a West Australian woman, died due to a misdiagnosis of her vulva cancer. She had to tiptoe around trying to find answers, and sadly, too often, this is the experience of women with gynaecological cancer. Thank you, Member. Minister for Health. Mr Speaker, I thank the member for Morley for uh, her grievance today to raise an important issue in our community. And, um, and, and as she noted, it today is International Gynaecological Awareness Day. And it's, the member for Morley is absolutely correct, Mr Speaker. Often these diseases associated with women um, have, gone, um, have gone on undetected, ununderstood, un, you know, not talked about. And so a lot of work needs to be done in, in order to, to improve education of our medical students, rate, uh, make sure we have much more preventative services, better screening, diagnosis and treatment. Um, and we need to continue to undertake research and ensure that we do have this level of awareness around um, these, sort of, um, these sort of issues to ensure that this is an issue that we should all feel comfortable talking about and that women shouldn't have any, receive any barriers in order to have um, their issues addressed. And, uh, and Mr Speaker, can I begin uh, 
by first of all also joining the, the member for Morley to, to thank Kath Mazella, who's in the gallery today, for your work today. And it's great to see Rebecca and Tony here. Mr Speaker, I don't think I've ever said these words in Parliament before, and I'm sure I'll never say them again, but um, Kath, I remember your underpants well. And um, Kath has, uh, has, through her tireless work, uh, in the community, continue to raise awareness around gynaecological uh, and, and women-based uh, uh, diseases and treatments and, 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 and causes of, of those diseases uh, by utilising the, the, the great leveller in all our community, and that is we all wear underpants. And, it's, um, it, and I think it was just, I remember, I think we met when we were still, when, I, when we were in opposition, Kath, and um, I, I, I thank you very much for your generous time at that point in time as well, but also just for your ongoing work. It's fantastic and, and really just raises awareness about a very important issue. Um, and I, I just want to talk, uh, Mr Speaker, a little bit about some of the issues, some of the activities that are going on towards this cause around better understanding, promotion, awareness and um, delivery uh, of services around gynaecological issues. And um, as the member for Morley said, today is International Gynaecological Awareness Day and to celebrate information stalls hosted by Endometriosis WA Inc Gynaecological Awareness Information Network um, or GAIN will be at King Edward Memorial Hospital to continue to promote this important, these important messages. Kath, I understand um, as the, the consumer advocate part excellence will also be at King Eddie's uh, main foyer to engage with women and, and consumers to, um, to continue to talk about these issues. And Women's Health Week runs from the 7th to the 11th of September, uh, Mr Speaker, and the King Edward Memorial Hospital facade will be lit up this week for Women's Health Week and International Gynaecological Awareness Day, and dis displays will also, fe will, um, also feature in the Women's Health uh, Library. Uh, Mr Speaker, GAIN utilises the office space in the King Edward Memorial Hospital site to facilitate meetings and promote GAIN events. And of course we should acknowledge GAIN and their 20th anniversary high tea, um, uh, which will be not their 20th anniversary, which will be acknowledged uh, through a high tea, which has been promoted throughout the health service. But Mr Speaker, sadly uh, too many uh, of our young medical graduates come into the workforce without a proper um, exposure, understanding and appreciation uh, around, um, around women's health issues. And medical students at all universities will now have a curriculum as, um, associated with women's health. The Cancer Council WA holds forums for medical professionals, including a yearly Women's Health Day event in collaboration with the Women and Newborn Health Service, Breast Screen WA and sex, Sexual Health Quarters. The Royal Australian and New Zealand um, College of Obstetricians and, Gynecolo and Gynecologists requires doctors to complete a certificate in women's health. So you can see, Mr Speaker, that slowly but surely we are, try we are starting to reverse this uh, level of, of, of lack of understanding or awareness within our medical profession. Uh, around prevention um, acting, uh, Mr Speaker, the National HPV Vaccination Program offers HPV vaccination uh, to all children aged 12 and, and registered in the Australian Immunisation Register. Participation is around 80%, but geographic va variations exist. Um, so targeting at risk groups is critical in reducing a number of different cancers, particularly cervical cancer. And in relation to screening, Mr Speaker, the National Cervical Screening Program has focused on raising awareness of the changes to cerv cerv uh, cervical screening introduced in December 2017, including replacing the two yearly pap smear with a more accurate five yearly screening, um, introducing a self-collection um, option. These changes together with HPV vaccination will help reduce rates of uh, cervical cancer. Reminders and invitations are sent, uh, sent to when women are due or overdue for, for cervical screening. The WA Cervical Cancer Prevention Program focuses on increasing cervical screening participation, particularly among called and Aboriginal women. And COVID-19 pandemic has reduced has seen a reduction in the number of people presenting for, for uh, cervical Memphis. screening rate, and our cervical screening rates have reduced. To help address this, the Commonwealth Department of Health published a guidance on managing NCSP participants during the COVID-19 pandemic, and last month started a promotion campaign reminding people to not delay screening. 
The WA Department of Health is also developing social media messaging, encouraging people not to delay their cancer screening. Around diagnosis and treatment in WA public health system, Mr Speaker, public health outpatient gynaecology clinics are available at King Eddie's Hospital, Fiona Stanley and Osborne Park Hospital, St John of God, uh, uh, St John of God Midland Hospital also see public outpatients. Gynaecological cancer services are concentrated at King Edward Moriah Hospital, but clinically complex cases may also require surgery at St John of God RPH and, and Fiona Stanley Hospital. And Mr Speaker, we need to continue to undertake research into this area. Too, too often, uh, research is focused upon uh, some of the uh, mainstream or male-oriented uh, male uh, uh, diseases and, and, um, and uh, medical conditions. And so the West Australian Health Translation Network late last year called for applications for the $9 million endometriosis research grant opportunity. Mr Speaker, Gynecological Awareness Day is an important opportunity to remind everyone that women's uh, health needs are, should be as equal to men's uh, 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 medical needs, and this is a very important day to observe all the opportunities that we have to raise public awareness. Thank you.